Right, so in this video I'm going to look at Pythagoras' theorem with you. Um, now Pythagoras' theorem is all about a special kind of triangle and that triangle is called a right-angled triangle. Um, so all the triangles will have this kind of familiar, familiar shape to them and what you're looking for is the right angle here, the 90 degree angle. So that little box there is there to represent that it's 90 degrees. Now if it doesn't have that, Pythagoras' theorem actually doesn't hold, it's not true at all. Now what is Pythagoras' theorem? Well, first we need to know a couple of things. Um, so in any triangle, the angles and the sides have a really important link. Now, angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So if we've got a right angle triangle, then if one of the angles is 90, that must be the biggest angle in that triangle because the other two, because 90 is half of 180, the other two between them have to add up to um, 90 degrees. So therefore that must be the biggest angle. Now like I said, in any triangle, the sides and the angles have a relationship and that relationship is that the sides are in proportion to the angles. So what I mean by that is the biggest angle in the triangle have the longest side opposite the smallest angle in a triangle will have the shortest side opposite it. So if you've got a right angle triangle, the 90 degree angle is always the biggest angle and therefore the side opposite is always the longest side. And because that's always the case in a right angle triangle and it's special, um, we give that side a name and that name is hypotenuse. Now it's important that you know that word, especially for later on when we do some more things with right angle triangles. You need to know how to spell it and you need to know the name of it and how to identify it. So when the first thing you need to know when you're looking at any right angle triangle is, okay, where is my hypotenuse? And you need to spot that. Now Pythagoras' theorem states that the square of the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Now that all sounds very complicated, but actually all it means is this. If I was to call, um, let's say, this side x, this side y, and this side z, then what I would be able to say is that actually x squared plus y squared is equal to z squared. So let me just repeat the theorem for you again. The square of the hypotenuse, so there's the hypotenuse, z squared, is equal to the sum, that means we add them together, of the squares of the other two sides. So the square of x and the square of y added together. And that's all it is. Now you might think, well how does that help us? Well it helps us quite a lot because if we have two sides of a right angle triangle and we want to know the length of the third one, then we can work that out. So I'm going to go through three examples here. They're very similar and just keep it nice and basic. It can get more complicated and um, you can certainly be doing Pythagoras where you've got um, a hidden triangle or a triangle in another triangle, but we'll keep it nice and simple to begin with. Um, and all we're going to be doing is finding a missing side. Okay. So the first one we've got here, I want to find side X. The first thing you've got to do is identify that hypotenuse. So there we have, there's the hypotenuse, it's opposite the right angle. Now the hypotenuse is the one that's going to be equal to the other two sides. So in this case then, that is our, that's our hypotenuse. So we can say that x squared is equal to the sum of the other two squared and added together. So we just write is equal to 3 squared plus 4 squared and that is it. Once you've got that set up, the rest of it is quite nice and straightforward. So x squared is equal to, or 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 9 plus 16 is 25, so x squared is equal to 25. Now, how do I go from x squared to x? Because I don't want to know what x squared is, I want to know x. And the answer is, you square root. Now the square root of 25 happens to be a nice number. 
and we get the answer 5. Now this is actually a special triangle and it's called a Pythagorean triple. Okay, and a Pythagorean triple is basically where all three sides of this triangle are integers, they're whole numbers. Okay. Right, moving on to question number two then, we're going to do the same thing. Now what you should notice this time, again, find that hypotenuse. Um, so we have that hypotenuse is 12. So we write it out in the same way. So we can say, okay, 12 squared is equal to, and it's these two added together, 7 squared plus y squared. So this time our missing side is not the hypotenuse. So we're going to have to do a bit of rearranging. Now we want y squared to be the subject. So the, all I have to do is take away 7 squared from both sides of the equation. And that gives me 12 squared take away 7 squared. Now what some people try to remember is that if it's the hypotenuse you're finding, you add them. And if it's one of the shorter sides, then you find the difference between them. Now, we could write out all of that working or we could just skip, and, uh, skip ahead a little bit. And if you've got your calculator, you can use it here. So we're going to do 12 squared minus 7 squared. And I'm just using my calculator to do that and I get the answer 95. So y squared is equal to 95. And then we're going to square root both sides. Now, here's a little tip for you. On your calculator, don't once you've done that bit, don't clear anything, press the square root button, and then you should have a button that looks like that, which is answer. So if you press square root and then your answer button, it just puts 95 back in there to save you typing it again in case you make a mistake. Then press equals, and then you might have to press um, this button, your S to D button, to change it from just a square root into a decimal. Now I'm gonna give my answer to three significant figures. So that means I want three digits. Now I get, Let's change that to, oh sorry, y is equal to the square root of 95, which is, now I get 9.74679, da, 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 da. so if I want three significant figures, I count three digits, one, two, three, there's my cutoff, that's six rounds to seven, the four up to the five, and I get 9.75, and in this case it was meters. And there's my answer, okay? Right, last one, it's exactly the same principle again, but I've just given you some decimal numbers just to show you the difference. Now, spot your hypotenuse, so it's opposite the right angle, so it's Z. So, Z squared equals 6.2 squared plus 9.3 squared. No need to do any rearranging this time. Z squared is equal to, so we're going to go straight for 6.2 squared plus 9.3 squared. And then I'm going to, so I get there 124.93. And then to save space, I won't put the square root sign in, but we just square root that. So again, square root, answer, press the equals button, S to D. Now to three significant figures, I get 11 point two and it's centimeters now it's 11.17 so obviously the seven rounds the one up two or two okay and that is my final answer so that's the very simple way that you go through to be able to find the missing side using Pythagoras' theorem